with uh, Mia and sister. They're coming in from New Jersey and Donna and her toller's name is Tori coming in from Pittsburgh, New York. Awesome. Jean and Boomer coming from Indiana. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, if you didn't have a chance, go ahead and I guess in the Q&A, not the chat, I apologize for that. Um, go ahead and put your name, your dog's name and the state you're joining from. Um, and we're just going to go real briefly talk and talk through some kind of all the technical stuff for tonight. So this is this webinar is being recorded. Um, you are more than welcome to grab a pen and paper if you want to take notes during this. Um, use just the Q&A, not the chat <laughs> feature at any point uh, tonight to ask questions, uh, make comments, ask for clarification. I don't think you guys have mics or cameras, so the Q&A will be our way to answer the questions that you have. Um, but other than that, thank you for joining us. We hope to see you at Toller National or at future barn hunt events. Um, so my name is Carolyn McGraw. We have Jennifer Hollis and Carrie Pearl Mutter with, Mutter with us tonight, and I am going to turn it over to Carrie. Hey, um, good uh, good evening, everyone. I almost said good morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all for joining us. Um, I think is there a way if if people have questions, is there a way to like raise a hand in Zoom? Do you know Carolyn or um, with our setup? There might be, but if no, if nothing else, I'll keep an eye on the Q and A and kind of stop you if anyone has any questions that come up. Okay, all right, great. Um, could you pop the PowerPoint back up, please? All right. Um, let's go ahead and start with the first slide. No. We're going to make this like as entertaining and fun as possible. So hopefully um, you pick up a few tips here and there and you can learn from definitely from my many mistakes. Um, Jen and Carolyn, I'm sure don't make as many as I do. Um, so hopefully that you'll get some good takeaways. And then um, we have some videos to show you. We're gonna go, go over just the basics, really focusing on instinct and novice, but we're also gonna give you some of the more detailed rules uh, just so you're aware of them. Uh, we don't want you walking away from this feeling like you have to know every single rule. You don't. The best way to get into barn hunt is to get experience by doing it and by volunteering and um, just really spending time with your dog and having a lot of fun in the sport. Hit the next slide. Okay, so here's some uh, basic links for you. Um, the general rule book, that's a good idea to read before you start. And we'll again, go over the rules here. I think you've all probably registered with Barn Hunt, but if you haven't for some reason, there's the link, if there's a one-time registration fee. And just as a reminder, Barn Hunt is its own association. It's not part of AKC. Um, so you do have to have a separate registration. And then dogs need to be six months or older to compete. Okay, so when you get uh, started in at your very first trial and at future trials, the, the judge will have a general briefing, usually at the beginning of the trial that changed a, a little bit with COVID, but I think uh, most judges are going back to that where, where you'll have a, a general briefing where they just explain the ground rules. Um, and then you'll have another briefing right before your instinct class or novice class where the judge again will go over any specific rules with you and let you see the course layout. So you know exactly what is expected of your dog and, and what the course looks like and um, probably give you a few little tips, especially if you're brand new. Okay, so the instinct test for barn hunt, it's different than the other classes. Um, one, it's optional, that makes it different. Into, so you don't have to pass it. Um, and you can enter it at the same time as novice A, which is why we were encouraging everyone who is entering our trial to enter instinct and novice A at the same time, since you can do both. Um, we'll show some videos so you can see exactly what it looks like and go into the rules, but just know that instinct gets at the intro class, it's not recognized by the AKC, and you only need one qualifying score to pass, and then you get the ratty title, which is again, not recognized by AKC, but that's a, a special barn hunt title. Okay, so 
when you get into the ring with instinct, and I promise this is all going to make much more sense when you see some of the videos and just experience it yourself, but hopefully I am describing enough that um, it, it helps a little bit. So the tubes are not going to be covered at all in instinct. They may have a little bit of um, straw around them, but they're, they're not going to be buried. You will immediately notice where they are. And there is a cradle, which is really like a piece of plywood with three tubes um, attached to it. And one tube will be empty, one tube will have litter in it, and one tube will have a live rat in it. You're not going to be able to see which tube has the rat in it because the tubes are, well, the rats can breathe and there are holes in the tubes. They're not um, transparent and, and it's looking at the tube, you wouldn't know if a rat was in there or not unless, I don't know, it was like making a lot of noise or something, which they usually don't do. So what you'll do is let your dog in, um, into the ring, and then you direct your dog to hopefully identify which tube has the rat in it. Tollers are excellent at this. Um, at barn hunt in general, you know, they just have great noses and you can kind of tell which, hopefully tell which rat or which tube has a rat in it because they will do some sort of in indication. And we have some videos of that so you can see what uh, the different indications look like. There's also going to be a climb, which is just a, a bale. A climb is when the dog jumps on any bale of hay. That counts as a climb. And then there it will be a tunnel too, but your dog doesn't have to complete the tunnel to pass in instinct. They just need to identify the rat in the tube. I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint for a second. And then um, I have a YouTube video as an example of this. As you guys have questions, the Q&A function is probably at the bottom of your screen. It looks like two little chat boxes. Um, so go ahead and as you have questions, go ahead and put them in there. So this is just a short little video that's going to show what instinct looks like. Not a toller, but <laughs> still helpful. And I will go back to our PowerPoint now, but hopefully that kind of gave you a little um, example of what um, the instinct class looks like. And your dog will know where the rat is well before you do. If you're like me, then you won't pick up on your dog's signal and will never pass instinct and but just move on to the next level. So um, really don't sweat it if you don't pass instinct, or if you just haven't picked up on what your dog's cues are when they identify the rat, sometimes it can be um, really subtle. And these are what the tubes look like. So this is why you, it's really difficult to see if there's actually a rat in the tube. <laughs> if I can advance, there we go. <laughs> okay, so let's say you, um, pass instinct because you and your dog are awesome and you're now you're in your novice um, trial so you'll have again you'll have like a briefing with the judge you'll be able to see the course um, in novice you have to get three qualifying scores so three passes to get the rat end title that title is recognized by the AKC I would say right now the AKC will allow you to transfer only your highest level title for like, a, I think it's $25, $28, somewhere around there. So I wouldn't, you know, there's no need to transfer each title, at least with the current um, AKC rules, you could wait until you get like the highest level title and then just pay the fee one time to transfer. Unless you're going for like a total versatility certificate or uh, versatility excellent and you want the barn hunt um, title to count. Uh, towards your versatility, then you can just transfer whatever title you have at that moment to, to count for your points that you need for your versatility title. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, oh, I think I just went backwards. How did I do that? Okay. Oops, I am going backwards. <laughs> there we go. All right. 
we have another video. This is not a toller, uh, but I thought it was a good example. And I'm sorry if it's a little bit small, but this is my um, Sammy Ed Freya. Um, and this will be a good example of, um, I struggled at the end to find a place to, cl to climb, but. The course, the judges design the courses. So um, what you see set up here probably isn't going to be what you see at um, the national trial, but it's all the, the same principles. There are specific rules about how they have to design the courses and they get higher and higher at each level. But you can see like the tunnel um, is just straight running straight through, which Freya was able to do really nicely, even though she's like bigger dog, the, um, the bigger dogs still have to go through the tunnel and they figure it out. Um, and then the, she's looking for a climb. Jen's trying to help her figure out where the best place to climb is. Um, sometimes you'll see there, there'll also be steps, which you can use, but don't have to use. Um, and then of course you have to find the rat in the tube. I don't think we need to watch the next like, minute while I try to get her to climb, but in case you're wondering, she does. I do pass that one, so. <laughs> Go, I think you skipped a slide before oh. the video that had more details about. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, here we yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, go ahead, Carrie, sorry. <laughs> okay. um, so for the novice, <laughs> for the, the to qualify novice, and sorry, Kiki is parking in the background. Um, there you have an, an, one empty tube, very similar to instinct as far as the tube count, but just totally different setup. You have an empty tube, a litter tube, and a rat hidden in a, um, in a tube. And these, all of the tubes are like, they're hidden in, in the straw. So you won't be able to tell like which tube is which, but they're not like very deep that the dog can't uncover them by like digging a little bit with their paws or, you know, sniffing them out. Um, and then to qualify, the dog has to execute a climb, which is just jumping on a bale of hay, completing a tunnel, and then you have to identify which tube the rat is in just by um, watching your dog and looking at um, your dog's indications. There are rules around like how you release your dog and that you can't touch your dog and you can't climb on a bale of hay. And there's like some exceptions to those. But we're going to go through all of those details, but just the basic principles are your dog has to do a climb, correctly identify the rat in the tube. If, you're, if you, your dog finds a tube, like the litter tube, they might be scenting because it you know, smells like a rat, but the live rat isn't in it, and you call rat, um, then you're going to be, um, then that's going to be an NQ because you didn't correctly identify like the tube with the rat in it. Um, so climb, tunnel, rat. And that's for a novice. But not, it doesn't have to be in that order. So if you saw on the last one, Freya found the rat first, did the tunnel, and then we did the climb. And then I'll show you another video real quick where we do it in a different order. <laughs> She got a bonus tunnel on that one. She was really liking her tunnel. <laughs> and no, no penalties for doing it twice. You just have to make sure. <laughs> and then, so she did, in this one, she did the tunnel twice, um, then did her climb, and then she eventually finds the rat. It's a little hard to see when she finds the rat. It was in the back corner, but. One thing you can do that I did, especially like in novice and open when I wasn't, um, and may still do when I'm like not as confident that I know what my dog is telling me which to pass the rat I would like maybe she'd run straight to the rat but I wasn't like really sure because then she ran away from it and sniffed around so I would have her do the other elements and then come back and point out to the rat um so that's like kind of one strategy if you're uncertain some people will say like oh if your dog goes straight to it you you should just call it like there's not really a right answer you just have to find out um, what works best with you and your dog 
Um, so a little bit about the collars, leashes, and harnesses that are allowed in barn hut. Um, not allowed anywhere on the trial grounds is any kind of electronic or e-collar, any kind of bark collar, including the citronella and the GPS bark collars, any kind of head halter, um, uncovered prongs, and muzzles. Um, barn hunt does typically allow covered prongs with quick release um, snaps um, or buckles. Um, but when barn hunt is on shared grounds with other AKC events, like it will be at our national, because um, obedience and rally will also be going on at the same time, we have to go by AKC rules, which means that any type of prong collar is not allowed under AKC um, rules. So it won't be allowed at the barn hunt at the Toller National because it's um, shared grounds with AKC events. But you may find at other barn hunt events where it's just barn hunt taking place and not other AKC events um, that cover prong collars with quick releases will be permitted. Um, dogs cannot be brought to the blind on a retractable leash, but you can be using a retractable leash to potty your dog as long as it's away from um, you know, anybody else that um, you could be running into with your dog on the retractable leash. Uh, we are, uh, it's typically recommended to use a collar and a leash combo that's gonna be easy to remove and reattach, um, a slip lead or um, a martingale or something along those lines, or a leash um, and collar with a quick release buckle is gonna be um, your best bet. You'll, you are allowed a single poop bag, not a poop bag holder, but a single poop bag um, to be attached to the leash or tied to the leash. Um, and in barn hunt, dogs run naked, which means that you're going to re be removing all of their collar, leash, harness, clothing, everything, um, so they're running with nothing on them. Um, the start box is going to be a four by four square inside the ring, and that's where all teams will release their dog. If you saw in the previous videos, there was like the multicolor play foam squares on the floor. That was the start box. Um, the judge will point out the start box in the briefing to assist the instinct and novice classes. And if they don't, you can just ask them, you know, if you're, if it's not clear, you know, where's the start box, where do I start from? They'll be happy to show you where to go to. Um, as Carrie mentioned before, steps are used as a climbing aid for the dog. They're going to be placed somewhere on the course that the dog can use the step, um, to be able to then exit onto a bale of straw with all four feet onto the landing area. Um, and the step in the landing area will be large enough for the large dogs to be able to place all four feet. It's not required that you use the step, but it's there to help. So if you have a, a smaller dog, a younger dog, or an older dog, and maybe you, they're having trouble jumping up or down or anything like that, somewhere on the course, there will be a step to help you help the dog get up on um, at least one or one area of uh, straw. Um, there will, there's always... There can be unofficial tunnels, which are just circumstantial tunnels that kind of occur by the placement of the hay. For example, if you have leaners where the bales are kind of leaning on their side, um, you know, and straight underneath that might form what could look like a tunnel, but that's not an official tunnel. Um, official tunnels are always going to be 18 inches wide by the height of the sidewall bales that are used in their constructions um, when they're set on their taller horizontal side and covered by boards. That's a lot of technical language, but we'll show you a picture in a minute so you can kind of get a little bit of a sense of that. All courses will have at least one official tunnel and the judge can will point out the official tunnel in the briefing for novice. And again, if you're a little bit confused or not sure, you can always ask the judge, you know, what's the not where's the novice tunnel? What's the novice tunnel? Um, Barn Hunt recently changed the rules a little bit to allow um, course courses to be nested to make it easier when um, you're running um, a bunch of dogs through different levels so that um, a higher level tunnel could be on the course for a lower level. If the dog does that, it will count as an official um, tunnel if they choose to do the higher level tunnel, but they don't have to. There will always be a tunnel that's appropriate for that level. So in novice, the required official tunnel is straight and short. It's basically just two bale lengths um, of a straight tunnel. So this um, picture is not a novice tunnel because it actually has a curve in it. This is probably an open level tunnel. But just to give you an idea of um, when the bales of straw are standing on their tallest side, 
that is how tall the tunnel will be. And then there's usually a board that will go across and then there will be some other kind of um, bales laying on top of that to form the tunnel. Um, so how a uh, barn hunt works is handlers and their dogs stage in a blind area when they're getting ready for their turn in the ring. There can be up to five handlers and their dogs in the blind at the time. The purpose of the blind is to have one set of hides used for all handlers and dogs in the blind and also to have the next dogs queued up ready to go. So that means that for everybody who is in that blind, so up to five handlers and their dogs um, for any particular level, the um, rat and the empty tube and the litter tube will all be in the same exact place. Um, and this just makes it easier for judges um, to keep things um, a little bit more organized that they don't have to make different hides for every single um, team. Um, when in the blind, the dogs should be kept calm and quiet. Um, you are allowed to have food such as treats, um, toys that don't make any noise. Um, mats, like if you teach your dog place and you wanna have them you know, down on their mat. Um, they're allowed to be used in the blind area as long as they're removed when you and the dog exits the blind. You cannot return to the blind. Um, and also as long as having those th things is not disruptive to the other dogs. Um, you're also permitted to have water in the blind, whether that be a water, you know, container and bowl or a Mr. Bottle or something like that. Again, remember that you have to take out everything that you take in. Um, and it's your responsibility to know when it's your turn to go in the blind and get there in a timely manner. If you have a possible conflict, you have to let the blind steward know ahead of time. So um, Stonehenge, who's going to be running our um, barn hunt at our Toller National, um, uses this really awesome um, computer and monitor system where you'll be able to see ahead of time um, who's grouped together in a blind for each area. So if there are, say, 10 dogs and novice, there would be two blinds of five, and you'll be able to see who's in blind one and who's in blind two. Um, and if you have a conflict, like if you're participating in rally or um, or obedience, we can work with you. If it, you know, if it's almost your turn to go in one of those, we can move you to a later blind, um, or we'll we'll hold if we have to to wait for you. Um, once the last dog from the previous blind enters the ring, the next group of dogs should be ready to go right into the blind. Um, so make sure that you kind of know where you are or where the blind in front of you is so that if you need to like do things to prep your dog to get ready for its turn, you've got that kind of all out of the way, including pottying the dog um, before that final dog from the previous blind goes in for their turn so that you can be ready to get um, into the blind. Handlers in the blind can freely talk with each other, but you cannot talk to persons outside of the blind other than the blind steward. Um, any communication or smart device, including a cell phone um, that's brought into the blind has to be in, in a pocket or otherwise put away um, on mute or turned off. You can wear a smartwatch, um, but you cannot use it in the ring to time yourself. And we'll get into the do's and don'ts and the rules in a, in a minute. Um, handlers uh, may put anything that they brought into the blind that's not permitted in the ring or that they don't wish to take into the ring, um, like your food, your treats, your mat, your communication device. Um, if your dog goes in wearing a harness and a collar and you take the harness off ahead of time and are walking them to the ring, just in their collar. Um, all of that extra stuff can be put into a designated spot um, before you enter into the ring. Um, we'll likely have either like a some kind of table or a chair or something for you to drop all of your stuff off. Um, again, remember anything that you brought into the blind with you, you have to take out with you um, as you're you know going in for your turn. You're not going to be permitted to return to the blind after your run. And that's just to prevent cheating because you know where the rats are and that doesn't prevent you from going and telling everybody else or even making some kind of comment that could accidentally tell anybody else in the blind where the rat was hidden. Um, so when it's your turn to enter the ring, again, dogs must run naked. So without any kind of collar, leash, harness, anything on them. Um, so once the dog enters the ring, they should proceed to that start box. And then once the gate is secured, the judge will say, you may go when ready. 
at that time, you'll want to take off all of the collar, leash, harness, whatever you have that you didn't pre-take off <laughs> um, and hand it to the gate steward or place it on the floor or the ground um, or in a bucket or a hook provided. Um, collars and leashes cannot be tossed or thrown. You may also place your entire collar leash harness in your pocket, but it needs to be entirely in your pocket so that no part of it is visible. Um, you cannot carry it in your hand. So, and they can ask during the briefing to point out where they should put their collar leash and harness, right? Yes. Yeah. They'll usually say, if, you know, there's a hook here, if you want to use it or just place it on the ground, you know, behind you in the start box or something like that. Yeah. And they're really strict about it. At least I've seen it where if it's hanging out of your pocket, then you're, you'll get an NQ. So I would even like, don't even worry about putting it in your pocket. It's allowed if it's completely hidden, but like, I don't know, unless you're using a show lead, it's, it's just not gonna happen. So just think that put it on the ground or hand it to the, the steward and then you'll be all set. So once you've got everything off of your dog, um, you'll wanna wait for the judge to um, instruct you that you may go before you release your dog. If they said like, you may go when ready, then you can feel free to take everything off and then go when ready. Um, handlers are permitted to take a few minutes to get their dog settled and focused before they let them go. The dog must be released from the start box with their front feet and chest inside the start box and at least two of the dog's feet on the ground. You may gently and loosely place one hand or arm on or around the dog's chest area, the four legs at the shoulder, their neck or torso while you're getting off their collar, leash, and harness um, if you want to prevent them from going while you're taking all of that off. Some people just like take it off, let them go. Some people prefer to kind of hold them, take it off, maybe let them settle for a second, and then let them go. Again, it's recommended to use collars and leashes that are going to be easy and quick to remove, such as slip leads. And we're only just going to watch like the first um, couple of seconds of this video, but I thought it was a good example of a method of how to get the dog ready to be released in the ring. So you'll see I kind of loosen up his car, his um, his slip lead. I put my hand around his loosely around his neck, take it all off, and then I let him go when I'm ready. Right, and after the judge, the judges, uh, I think a lot of the judges that we've been to usually say like go when ready they but there there could be a judge uh that tells you that wants you to wait until they actually tell you to start so just make sure you're kind of listening to the judge um so you know when you're allowed to go all right so the the rules and the do's and the don'ts so while you're in the ring you are allowed to move around the course while the dog works to be able to view and call the marker the correct live tube you're allowed to speak and gesture at will and verbally praise and encourage the dog to search certain areas, climb and or tunnel through voice and or hand gestures. Um, you can step over, but not on the instinct cradle. You can tip up or move a bale such as a leaner to access the tube for removal. Um, and if you do not return the bale to its original position without delay and before moving on, it will remain where it falls for the duration of the run even if that means it blocks other parts of the course and, um, or the tunnel. And we're gonna discuss the details of the safe handling and removing of the rat a bit later. Um, you can touch and lean on the outer barrier or a post as a balance aid and or use the bales or boards or other course equipment to catch yourself if you slip and or as an aid to get back up if you fall. Otherwise, you're not allowed to touch anything. And I'll go over that in a second. You are permitted to use an obedience command such as stay, wait, sit, or down. Um, if you look at some videos on YouTube, you'll see some people might, um, while the dog is, you know, if, if the last thing you need to do is the tunnel, they might um, tell them to sit, stay at one end of the tunnel, and then you can go to the other end of the tunnel and call them through. That is, that is permitted. Um, so here's a quick video of um, a dog doing a novice run. Um, and you'll see her actually in this video use that use obedience commands to get the dog to do the tunnel. So I thought this was a good example. And you can also, as you're watching this, you can um, see her 
you know, talking to the dog. You can see her using her hand to direct the dog to do things. Um, those are all permitted. Um, you'll also hear, if you didn't hear it, when the, when the dog did do the climb, the judge said climb. So that's like your way of um, knowing that the dog, the judge saw your dog do the elements. So if you're ever not sure if the judge saw the dog, you know, do the climb or do the tunnel, if they didn't call it out, then that means that the person keeping um, record didn't write it down and just do it again. It's happened to all of us. So. <laughs> You can see she's pointing and trying to get the dog to look in different places. And she called the rat on that and she was right. So the do nots, um, you are not allowed to bring any kind of food, including treats, any kind of toys, and you're not allowed to be chewing gum in the ring because your dog could think that you have a treat in your mouth. You are not allowed to self time in the ring. So for example, if you're doing novice and you know you have two minutes, you shouldn't be using your smartwatch or any other kind of device to know, you know where you are in that two minute period. Um, you also cannot deliberately lead out from the start box to get an advantage. So you can't tell the dog to sit, stay in the start box and then you go to the other side of the tunnel and call them through as the very first thing that you're doing. So um, the handler and the dog need to leave the start box at approximately the same time. Um, an inadvertent lead, that, um, lead out, such as the handler leaving the box and the dog just fails to move with the handler, that's not penalized, um, but you can't tell the dog to stay and then you um, leave from the start box without them. You're also not allowed to bowl or drop the dog to, to start. This is um, usually more applicable to small dogs where you might walk in with the dog in your arms and then... Um, you're not allowed to drop them or push them or shove them in any kind of way um, as part of the release. You're also not allowed to touch, pat, lean on, pick up, sit on, step on or over any bales, boards, steps, bridges, tubes, board bumpers, um, distance challenge mats, or any other course material or equipment. Um, except for when we, you know, what we went over um, above and also what we're going to go over in a bit later about um, praising and safely handling and removing the rat tubes. Accidentally brushing an object or a bale does not count as a deliberal touch and is not penalized. I've actually seen um, situations where the dog has knocked the board bumper off of the edge of the tunnel. And it's the board bumper is basically think of like, um, just a piece of foam that's just to protect them from the sharp, a sharp edge of the board or whatever. Like a pool noodle. Yeah, like a pool noodle, exactly. That was what I was trying to think of. If they knock that off, you cannot grab it and pick it up. Um, you need to, you, you're not allowed to touch anything except for um, in the praise and safe handling, which we'll go over in a bit. Um, you should also, you're also not allowed to deliberately use your hands or feet to sweep or shuffle through the straw trying to find a hidden tube. You're not allowed to deliberately touch the dog at any time after the release from the start box and before the finish of the course, except for during the allowed praise, which we'll go over in a second. This includes body blocking them with contact, pushing or nudging them with your hip, knee, leg or foot. You are not allowed to curse in the ring. Um, and I know that's one that I've seen people break, <laughs> um, but that will result in an NQ if you were not already gonna um, get an NQ. Um, you're not allowed to tip, flip, or drop a tube when removing it from the straw. Um, any angle over 45 degrees will result in a non-qualifying run. You're not allowed to grab, scruff, shake, or pull the dog by their ears, their tail, or their skin alone. So scruffing is defined as holding on to the dog with or without pulling, with your fingers closed and gripping around their hair or skin or their hair only. Um, open fingers buried in a long coat's not scruffing. Um, but you need to be careful with how you hold your dog, um, particularly when you do the taking off of their collar and leash. If you if you want them to wait before you release them, make sure you're not holding on to the back of their neck or you know their loose skin or anything like that. It's just going to be an arm gently around their chest or their neck or their um, or their underneath their stomach. You're not allowed to deliberately get on your hands and or knees or crawl or lay on the ground in the ring. Um, you're not allowed to peer directly into a tube to check for a rat before or after calling the rat. Um, if 
you're not sure if you really thought that was the rat and um, the handler, the judge says no, you can ask the judge to check the two, but you're not allowed to um, check the two for the rat at any point. Um, you're also not allowed to carry the dog out of the ring as punishment or corrective action and or into the ring if carrying is physically uncomfortable for the dog. Um, some just some general notes, um, a phone um, or communication device or smartwatch ringing or vibrating or otherwise making any noise or signal in the ring will result in a non-qualifying score. If the handler puts the device on the table or the chair on their way in, they have to make sure that they remove it on their way out. Um, handlers may request to be excused from the ring at any time. So if your dog just stops working, it's stressed out, it's out of control, you can just say, I'm going to excuse myself. Um, in the regular classes, that would result in a non-qualifying score. Um, in the Crazy Eats class, which we're not even really going to get into tonight, that's um, a little bit, takes a little bit more of experience. Um, the team will keep any accrued points as long as they found at least one rat and have a total score above a zero. Um, elimination on the course is a non-qualifying score for the dog. The dog must be immediately removed from the ring and is not allowed to continue. This includes urination, defecation, spitting up, throwing up, um, but normal slobber is not considered elimination. Um, belly bands are not allowed in a competition um, as of right now. Um, they are allowing them in fun runs now, but they don't allow them in actual competition. Um, if a bitch in season squats in the ring with the clear motion of peeing, um, she is to be removed and receives an NQ score, even if urine does not escape her pants. If a male dog lifts his leg, he may be dismissed even if it's not clear that urine reached the bale or the ground. Um, and if a bitch in season loses her pants for any reason, that's also a non-qualifying score. Um, I don't know if one of you wants to take over a little bit, um, talk about marking of the rat. Yeah, I can talk through this. Um... So the way that your dog chooses to indicate is only relevant to the handler. All these, uh, so many of these dogs are going to indicate different ways, and that is totally fine as you understand, as long as you understand how your dog is going to indicate. Um, handler indicates the find of the rat clearly and unequivocally, and the judge notes that indication. Um, so generally, most people say rat. Um, some of us who do scent work might say something different, like alert, um, as long as it's clear uh, there's no question about what you're what you're trying to communicate. That's fine. Um, if you choose to raise your hand, that is fine. But if you're only going to raise your hand, uh, let the judge know before you start your run. So your clear your call should be declarative, not questioning. So it's rat, not rat. <laughs> uh, you can't you can't ask the judge if the call is a correct one or is, like sit by saying, "Is this a rat? Is that a rat?" It's the handler's responsibility to make that call in such a way that the judge hears and understands it without question. Dogs aren't required to put their nose on the tube or be a specific minimum or maximum distance away from the rat tube uh, for the handler to call it. It's only necessary for the dog to indicate that live rat tube to the handler in such a way that the handler understands where the tube is and can point it out clearly to the judge. Um, handler may call the tube after the dog has left or when the dog is in a different area of the course. Um, if you are kind of gesturing to one, one kind of broad area, the judge might ask for clarification, might ask you to, to point a little closer to where specifically that rat is. Um, and you have, to, you have to be a little bit more clear if they ask for more clarification. A loud praise. So after the dog finds that correct rat tube, the handler may physically and or verbally praise the dog. This is your chance to get them all riled up and, and encourage them. A uh, handler can pet the dog, point at or stabilize and touch the tube, move or wiggle it. Um, there's a whole section in that rules, which I put in the, in the chat for you guys too, uh, called safely handling and removing rat tubes. And we're, we're going to get to some details of that too. Um, handlers can praise for as long as they like. You got to keep in mind your time does not stop during the praise period, though. Um, physical praise can happen before, during, or after rat removal and handoff, and it can be combined with restraint. Um, so once a handler completely removes their hands from the dog after praise or restraint, that's when the praise period ends and touching your dog again prior to another rat call re will result in an NQ. So that's the only time you're touching your dog is when you're praising them after they've, they've called a rat. Okay, so when it's time to exit the ring, 
Um, if you have been assessed a non-qualifying score uh, for being over time or for the handler calling an incorrect tube, uh, you'll immediately be shown the nearest location of a rat on the course, and you can briefly be praised before exiting the ring. So way your dog can still end on a good note and understand what it was they were supposed to be looking for. Uh, the dog can be carried, touched, gently guided, either on or off leash, uh, just to get them to recognize where that rat is. Um, you don't have to take advantage of this, but we're strongly encouraging you to. So, uh, however, if you get an NQ for elimination, aggression, or handler misconduct, you got to leave immediately and you can't show their dog prior, can't show your dog a rat prior to leaving. Um, you got to have that harness or collar and leash on before exiting the gate. Can't let your dog run back to your car, uh, even if they're being carried. So put your leash and collar back on uh, before leaving the ring. Um, you got, and that's just so you have, your dog is under control and doesn't slow things down. I can take so, that over. <laughs> awesome. Please do. All right. So there's um, a lot of um, options in terms of safely handling and removing the rat tubes. So at any class level, if the rat tube is found before all elements of the course are completed, the handler may choose any one of three different ways to safely interact with the rat tube. So as we mentioned before in novice, you have to indicate the rat, do a climb, and do the tunnel, and that can be in any order. So if they indicate the rat first, and then you still have the tunnel and the climb to do, you'll want to think about which of the options you'll want to have in terms of um, if you want to remove the rat or not. So the handler can either redirect their dog and leave the tube in place, or the dog may redirect. And we're going to go over um, these options um, in more detail in a minute. You, um, you can remove the live to with or without physically restraining your dog, or you can restrain the dog so that the rat wrangler can remove the live tube. Um, just to define like what a rat wrangler is here for people who don't know, in addition to the judge, at the lowest level, there'll be at least one person called a rat wrangler inside the ring and one person who's a rat wrangler outside of the ring. Um, and their um, job is basically, as you'll kind of hear as we go through these options, is just to help with that safe removing of the rat um, if, um, if you choose to have it removed um, while you complete other elements of the course. Um, so if you see the abbreviation RW on my presentation in a, in a, you know, as we keep going, that just means rat wrangler. So that's the other person in the ring besides the judge. And as you get to the higher levels, they may have, um, or the game um, crazy eights, they may have two rat wranglers inside the ring um, because rats may be um, being identified and coming out faster. So the handler may choose any of the three options, um, redirect, removing the tube themselves or restraining the dog so the rat wrangler can remove the tube um, after calling the rat for any or all of the live tubes on the course. And they can praise their dog um, around or at the same time as doing their um, rat removal as we um, talked about before. So some general rat removal rules. The judge does not remove or handle the rat tube while the competitor is being judged. So um, if you're gonna be doing the removing of the tube um, and handing it off to the rat wrangler, make sure you identify the people in the ring, who's the judge and who's the rat wrangler so you know who to hand it off to. Um, the rat wrangler never picks up the tube out of the straw unless the dog is physically restrained with their teeth at least two feet from the tube. The competitor may ask the rat wrangler to wait if they're trying to remove the tube before the competitor is ready. If the live tube is found as the last element of the course, so you did your climb, you did your tunnel, and then you find your rat, every effort should be made to leave the tube in place if possible. It'll just make it easier for the judge and the rat wrangler to reset for the next dog um, to come in and have their time. Um, the dog running after the rat wrangler or tube is not lack of control, aggression, or grounds for a non-qualifying score unless the dog interferes with the rat wrangler in such a way to place the rat or the rat wrangler in danger. So if they're tripping the wrangler, if they're grabbing at the wrangler's clothing, if they're body slamming or bouncing off of the wrangler, causing them to lose their balance, then you'd be assessed a penalty for lack of control and that can result in a non-qualifying score. But if the rat wrangler is just walking and the dog just wants to follow along, like, hey, you're taking my rat away, um, that's not necessarily gonna result in a non-qualifying score. 
Um, dogs who carry and or drop any tube or who resist releasing any tube to the point where the judge feels that the rat is in imminent danger can be assessed a lack of control penalty. Any dog who picks, picks up and shakes the tube is immediately assessed a non-qualifying score. A dog dropping a tube from a height that may cause potential injury to the rat is also assessed a non-qualifying score. Dogs retrieving a tube immediately and then gently hand uh, to hand without shaking or dropping or pushing incorrectly secured tubes off of a stack of bales is not to be penalized. As soon as the competitor calls a rat, this is when they may step on or over bales into distance challenges to get their, um, their dog, even if it's before the judge confirms the call. Um, and that's just so that if, you're, if your dog was up on a um, bale of straw and they're um, you know, pawing hard at the, um, at the tube, you'll wanna step in as quickly as possible um, a, you know, call a rat and then step immediately in so that you can make sure that they're not going to knock that tube off of the top of the bale of straw. Um, so a little bit more detail about redirects. So the handler can leave the tube in place and redirect the dog to other elements of the course through hand or uh, voice gestures. Um, if they choose to leave the um, tube in place, the tube um, is going to be is going to stay there for the duration of the run, and it cannot be removed by the rat wrangler unless the rat is in danger. In which case, the tube is removed, the run is over, and a non qualifying score is going to be assessed. When the dog voluntarily moves away from the tube before the handler can restrain the dog, that's considered a dog self direct. The handler can try to call the dog back to the tube for praise and or restraint, but the dog refuses to come promptly. The handler must either move on with their dog and then leave the tube in place, or before they move on, they can remove the tube and hand it to the rat wrangler. Um, if the dog returns to a tube that's left in place after a redirect and works it hard and vigorously in such a way that the judge feels the rat would be in danger if there is or was a rat in that tube, the handler can be assessed a non-qualifying score and the tube would be safely secured. If the dog returns to tube left in place and the handler calls the same rat again, they're assessed a non-qualifying score. Um, once the handler leaves the tube in place and redirects, they cannot later return to the tube to do one of the other removal methods. So once you leave a tube, you can't then decide that you're going to go back later and pick it up and hand it off to the rat wrangler. Um, so redirects uh, are fine if you think that you can get your, you know, if your dog hasn't done the climb or the tunnel. Um, if you can, if you think that they can leave the scent alone and then go do the other elements of the course. Um, and we're just going to show a quick video of kind of what that looks like. This is a really good example of what a redirect looks like. And actually, I think in this one, he uh, does all the elements and then finds the rat as the last thing. So you'll see that they'll just leave the tube in place and end their run at that. So once she got all four feet up on there, that was her climb. She did the yeah. tunnel straight away. And you can see he's sticking close to her and kind of directing her. But also if she starts to wander a different direction, he'll kind of follow and let her take the lead. <laughs> and th this is my husband being embarrassed because Misty got straw stuck in her pantaloons and she doesn't yeah. like that. <laughs> uh, and you can see there's loose straw and the bales. We haven't really talked about that. So there's loose straw both on the ground and on top of the bales. So they're all different areas to search. So she she very slightly indicated he called rat and that was correct. So that's when he went into praiser. And sometimes you'll see like particularly obviously where the gate is where you walk in, there's not going to be any bales or straw right there. So for some reason your dog is like fixated on that gate, you can use, you know, hand commands and clapping and voice or whatever and try to encourage them to go back to the rest of the course somewhere where there would be something for them to be searching for. Yeah, and if I like barn hunt, like I like rally because you can be as obnoxious as you want and <laughs> being positive and trying yeah. to encourage your dog. Yeah, whatever <laughs> you like to flap around your hands yep. and say and talk to them. And I mean, I, I would say that sometimes you can talk to them too much to the point where you're actually distracting them. And sometimes it's best just to shut up and let them work. <laughs> so you have to find that like happy medium between like trying to, um, you know, encourage them to hunt and, and, and being and interfering with their ability to work. So, and if you get nervous or you're uncomfortable with picking up the tube, 
it, you can like just do the redirect. I wasn't comfortable at first with picking up the tube and in novice, there's only like one with the rat. So I felt like I had enough control of my dog or she would hopefully listen to me enough to do like the tunnel and the climb if she hadn't done it. So you can do that too. And that's totally fine. But then as you like progress to the higher levels, you do need to um, get more comfortable with like picking up the two because it's easy to forget, you know, with the number of rats increasing, it's easy to forget where everything is, but I'll let Jen get back to explaining how to remove the tube if you do want to do that option. Yeah, so if you decide not to do the redirect option, the other one of the other options is to remove the tube yourself. So the handler can choose to remove the tube and hand it to the rat wrangler for removal from the ring. Again, the tube is never to be handed to the judge. The handler must be able to safely remove the tube without flipping it, tipping it, or dropping it, um, and without an extended wrestling match or tug of war that could put the rat in danger. If the tube's tipped more than 45 degrees or falls, the handler can be assessed a non-qualifying score. Um, if handlers cannot both restrain their dog safely and remove the tube, then they should use the restrain method, which we're going to talk about next. Um, if the dog has tipped the tube into an upright position, the handler should gently level the tube before they hand, hand it off to the rat wrangler. The handler must control the dog. The dog may be partially or wholly physically or verbally restrained, have moved on or be otherwise under the handler's control. Um, praise, tube removal, and restraint can all be combined. Uh, once the handler picks up the tube after praising the dog, he or she may briefly show the dog um, the tube, and, um, but shouldn't tip it or wave it in large sweeps or move it around in any kind of aggressive way. Um, and they should be sure to hand it off to the rat wrangler without delay. The rat wrangler will not take the tube if the dog is going to be leaping up or interfering with the tube or the rat wrangler. The dog's teeth must be at least two feet away from the tube for the rat wrangler to accept it from the ha um, handler. The handler may hand the tube directly out of the ring, but can't choose to do that as a special consideration training aid. So for example, they can't hand all the tubes out of the ring as a way to not have the inside rat wranglers move. Um, handlers who lift the tube out of the ring take responsibility for the rat during that period um, to ensure that the outside rat wrangler is not going to fumble or drop the tube. If the handler does not feel confident about being able to safely remove the tube, then they might want to consider either um, again, um, leaving it or uh, restraining the dog so that the rat wrangler can remove the tube. And that's not to scare you guys. It's not. It's not impossible. Like it is. It's very easy to hold it. Hold it safely. But if you're nervous about that, don't hesitate to ask the rat wrangler for help. We also will probably need volunteers that day to be an outside rat wrangler. So and feel free to when your class is over to come over and watch and see how the rat wranglers ha handle it. So I'm just going to show another video so we can. Oh. Oh, I didn't look. There we go. Um, show another video that just shows briefly um, what this um, method kind of looks like in terms of you'll see when the dog identifies the tube, the handler calls it, they immediately try to figure out the quickest and easiest way to get to the tube, which was a back, back to the other side. And you'll see they grab the tube and then they hand it off to the rat wrangler who then takes it um, and hands it off to the outside. So the last option is to physically restrain the dog. So when the, um, the dog is completely physically restrained by the handler, the rat wrangler will step in to remove the rat tube. Handlers should choose this option even with a compliant dog if they feel like they could not brace a hand, foot, and or climb on over a bale in order to reach a higher tube for safe removal. Um, so in the novice level, um, the, the straw will only be two bales high, but as you get to the higher levels, um, as you can kind of see in that past video, there were more elaborate structures. Um, and if you don't feel like you could have safely got to where that tube was hidden, um, then it's going to be best to restrain the dog and allow the rat wrangler to get in there and remove the tube. The rat wrangler is going to automatically step forward if the handler does not call. The handler doesn't have to call the rat wrangler. You don't have to say, hey, come get this. Um, all they need to do is just restrain their dog. So if the handler releases or redirects before the tube's been removed from the straw, then the rat wrangler is going to just leave the tube in place. Um, handlers may physically turn their dog away from the rat wrangler in order to facilitate safe removal, or they may move or scoot the dog into a safer place on the course while restraining them. Um, and that, and you'll want to um, be sure to prevent the dog from being at risk of falling when you're going to then release them. 
Handlers that are violently tackling or laying on their dog as in a way that's uncomfortable for the dog can be called for lack of control. So going back to how we talked about um, holding the dog to take their collar or harness leash off, the same um, methods are gonna need to be used while you're restraining the dog um, for the rat wrangler to come in. So arms um, or uh, loosely around their, their chest or their neck or under their belly, um, and then just turn them so that they're pointing away from the rat wrangler or back them up so that they're at least two feet away from where the tube is. Um, the handler may choose to call the dog to be restrained um, and the dog must come as uh, directly as it safely can to the handler for restraint. Um, if the dog instead moves away from the handler to explore other areas of that core of the course, again, that's considered a dog self redirect, um, but you can still remove the tube yourself at that point. But if, if you're not restraining your dog, the rat wrangler is not going to move in to remove the tube. Um, if the rat wrangler moves in to remove the tube prior to the end of the praise period or before the dog is properly restrained, the handler can politely tell the rat wrangler to wait. The handler cannot deliberately pick up the dog, but may place one or both hands again on their chest area, around their forelegs, the shoulder, um, arms loosely around the neck or torso. Um, they, you can do um, the fly ball hold in order to back the dog up from the tube, but then they want you to quickly shift your hands to holding them again at like the chest area or the four, um, four legs or around the torso. Um, because the fly ball hold, they can still kind of lurch forward um, and get to the tube or the rat wrangler. At least two of the dog's feet have to remain in contact with the ground surface at all times while the handler is touching the dog. If the dog's feet inadvertently leave the ground despite the handler's best efforts, then there's no penalty if the handler immediately returns the feet to the ground or surface. Uh, the dog must remain restrained until the rat wrangler is safe. Only the handler can actually determine based on the individual dog's personality when the rat wrangler is safe. Neither the rat wrangler nor the judge will verbally mark when the rat has left the ring. So you can know if you are restraining your dog and you turn them away and the rat wrangler reaches in and gets the tube, at what point can you let your dog go? Some people are perfectly fine letting their dog go as soon as the rat wrangler has the tube and has kind of started to walk to hand it off. Some people really need to wait until that tube is completely left the ring. Um, so the dog's not gonna then follow it or go after the rat wrangler um, before they would let their dog go. Um, just uh, something to keep in mind is releasing your dog after you've restrained them. Um, once the praise and reward and you feel that the rat wrangler is safe, um, you can turn the dog um, in place to point, to point them in a specific direction, but you can't scoot or walk the dog forward prior to releasing them in order to gain an advantage. Um, so you can't like turn them and try to move them forward to release them into the tunnel or something like that. You also can't bowl the dog um, from restraint. So um, one more video uh, just to show you kind of um, how quick and easy novice can be. So as soon as she released the dog, she went through the tunnel. I don't know if you heard the judge call the tunnel, but she already did the tunnel. And there's her climb. Although it's a little hard to see behind the judge. She got all four feet up on a bale of straw on the back there. And now she, she was just sniffing hard and um, Deb said that that's the rat and she was right. So I'm gonna let Carolyn do this last little part. Sure, so, so some common mistakes and kind of some reminders to kind of wrap up here. Potty your dog well before it's time to go into the blind. You're not gonna have time in between the blind and when it's time to go up to the ring. So do it well in advance. Um, yeah, any, any accidents that happen in the ring re will result in an NQ. Uh, when you're in the blind, don't talk to anyone outside of the blind. If you have questions, ask the blind steward. Um, no communication devices. Anything that you bring in with you, you got to bring out with you after your run. We'll have a real clear, like, designated spot, whether it's a chair or a table or a kennel, to put your treats or your phone or whatever between the blind and the ring. And then you'll pass back. You'll pass back that designated spot after your run. Um, no food in the ring, no toys, no gum, no nothing. Uh, yeah. Collars lead, and remember to take off all, all uh, equipment. Your dog is running naked. Uh, 
and only release your dog once the dog when the judge says you may go run ready you can drop that collar leash or harness on the floor hand to the gate steward or place in the bucket on a hook um, you'll see the setup once we get there and when, we, when you do your briefing if you're, it's not clear where you need to put your leash please 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 ask uh, you can't carry it in your hand don't toss or throw it in instinct the dog does not need to do a tunnel or a climb um, but in novice, you got to do the tunnel, the climb, and then indicate that live rat in any order. So you're, you're welcome to watch others in the ring, but stay back and stay quiet um, just so we're not distracting or also inadvertently kind of giving away the position of where a rat might be. Um, be aware of anything that you might do that could be considered double, double handling and get that person on qualifying score or something as innocent as taking photos with a flash or a loud clicking noise um, can get them in trouble. Um, don't approach the ring area or blind with your dog unless it's your turn to do so. And don't talk to anyone while they're in the blind and you're outside of the blind. And of course, have fun. Barn hunt is super fun and we hope you guys all have a good positive experience. If this is your first time, you're, you're going to have a blast and we're all here as a resource for you guys. So this is your reminder too. any questions that you have now that we're done with our presentation, um, go ahead and pop them in the Q&A and we'll answer them as best we can. Kathy has a question and I think I just allowed her to talk. So Perfect. <laughs> if I did that right, hopefully feel free to talk. Oh, wait, I got to unmute you, I think. Ask to unmute. Maybe. Kathy, I think you can, un you should, uh, there we go. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I have a question. Okay, um, I have my dog entered in the instinct. And once, um, she goes over the instinct information and say she passes instinct. Then we go into novice. And I'm curious as not ever being in novice before, how does a dog usually show that they found the rat? Are they excited or do they sit? Or, I mean, doesn't that take practice to figure that out with your dog? Um, it's all, I've seen all kinds of different things and it really only matters if you can figure out your own dog. I mean, some people, um, it does, it might take practice with, um, others. You just kind of, I always say, just trust your dog. So if they're giving any kind of signal to you, just go with it. Um, my Sammy Ed, um, I don't know that you saw in that one video, but I questioned whether or not it was, so she was sniffing hard and usually if she sniffs hard at something, it's going to be there at. And then I questioned her on it and she just sat down and looked up at me like, duh, I already told you. And then I still didn't call it. And I questioned her again. So she jumped up on the bale of straw that was right in front of where um, the rat was underneath. And she sat and she looked at me again, like, yeah, I'm serious. I told you. Um, I've seen dogs paw at it. I've seen dogs um, sniff it back up and freeze at it. Um, I've seen ones that bark at it. Um, so I, you know, usually if they're sniffing at something pretty hard, um, if they don't have any other indication in the beginning, I would just go with it. Um, it could be like going down, like you see that they're going towards something and all of a sudden they do a quick turn. And that might be an indication that the rats like over in that area because they like air scented something. So they're trying to move over there. It's, I think too, like it's sometimes it's easier in novice because they like to try and find something whereas instinct, the rat is like right out in the open novice makes them work a little bit. Um, and you just have to like look and see, okay, is that it? And if you're not sure you can like wait, say like you see it too, but you don't know if that's it or not, you can, do the other elements if you haven't done them and then go back to that too. Just like kind of think about time in the back of your mind too. Um, so you don't you don't run out, but that's another way um, to kind of, that I've handled it. M may not be like the best way, but um, it works for me. Maybe it can work for you too. And the reason why I always encourage people to enter both instinct and novice is to be honest, some dogs think that instinct is just stupid. Like the three tubes are laying right there and 
I'm not really searching for anything. So this is kind of dumb. Like, why don't you know where the rat is? It's it's obvious right there. <laughs> so the fact that when you go to novice and it's like hidden a little bit more, um, they like, and they're actually searching, they kind of feel like that's more of like, they get the game more, I guess. So don't be embarrassed or feel bad if your dog just decides it thinks the instinct is stupid. And <laughs> you do, and like we said, you do not have to pass instinct to go on to novice. So if your dog decides instinct is stupid, you never have to do it again and just go on in novice. Now in novice are all, or is there an empty tube, a tube with litter and the rat tube yeah. or three tubes in the straw area? Yep, and they can be hidden like anywhere on the course. There are some rules about how far apart they have to be at each level. Um, we didn't really get into that detail, but you couldn't, you couldn't find it in the rule book. It's like a little bit more um, like entry level friendly, I would say with, you know, how far, how far apart they have to be. Do some dogs find or get confused with the litter tube and the rat tube, or do they learn pretty quickly that the rat tube is better than the tube with the rat litter in it? That takes some practice. And I'll tell you, we were stuck at novice for a long time because we, uh, or we were stuck at open for a long time with our dog false alerting on litter tubes. Um, and it's, they, what they'll learn through practice and all that is when they get the most praise and what's most exciting is finding that live rat. Um, so it's, I, and the way we got past that with our dog is we, I was real, uh, certain to make sure we searched all areas of the course to make sure she wasn't just alerting on the first thing she found. Um, but they're, they're, that's definitely a possibility that they could alert on a litter tube. The good thing is if they do alert on a litter tube and you call that as rat and you're not correct, the judge will allow, will show you where the rat is and allow you to take your dog over to yes. the tube with the rat. And then you can say, this is what you're supposed to find. That's really good. That's a good job. Yeah, okay, good. So they start to, <laughs> to connect that that was what they were supposed to find. The praise came when they found the good. Rat. Well, that's yeah. good. Do the rats ever make any noise? Um, sometimes in the dogs, this happened to my dog. She and the judge like heard the rat scratching a little bit. <laughs> I didn't hear it at all. And like I missed calling it. And the judge said, Oh, that was a rat. Your dog like didn't smell it. She actually heard it. And she did like this, I can't even remember like what she did to hear, like she turned her head or something. It was like, I didn't catch it, but the judge <laughs> and Kiki saw it. So yeah, they can hear them too scratching. I think that's a little bit more unusual. Like I didn't come across that for a while, but um, yeah, they can, they can. Now does that count as a find? Did that count as a find? No, well, if, I didn't know, call it. if you know, if you know that that was, if, if they somehow hint you to that, it, that's fine. Like there's no what you know how your dog indicates to you is totally up to your dog and you so okay i have one more question um how about i um my dog marks a lot like if she's out running or going for a walk she marks she marks everything and i'm a little concerned as to how do you train a dog a male or a female bitch not to mark the uh, I find that once they understand the game, then they have less interest in marking. So once they know they're out there to hunt for something, then it seems like marking's not as important. You um, can you can distract them too. Like we, there's another woman that um, we do barn hunt with a lot, and she would she had a male dog that was marking, and you know you can't you, you you're not supposed to like discipline your dog in the ring or anything like that but she would kind of like without touching him and without just she would kind of redirect him so like have him like you know get excited have him follow her on another part of the course if she thought he was about to lift his leg um and then as he figured out the game he stopped doing it yeah so that so takes follow, with practice and, and some training then yeah, yeah you can follow real closely behind them and if they look like they're looking to mark more than they're looking to hunt like um, you can, you know, say, uh, uh, go search or, you know, try to, yeah, try to redirect them from another to another spot. And like I said, if they're, if they're like sniffing around someplace where it's obvious there can't be a rat because it's like right by the gate or there's no stall or, or anything there, you can say, Hey, come over here. Um, cause usually 
if they're off somewhere where it's not clear that they're hunting, then they're looking to mark. So, <laughs> so if a dog marks uh, the floor or um, a, a bale of hay or straw, then what do they do with that they clean, area that they been clean it up? On? So if it if it's on a uh, on a bale, if they if if we can't like somehow clean, you know, if it's, if it's very slight, they might spray it with, um, you know, with like a dog cleaner and they might move that bale to someplace where it's like in the back where the dog's not going to be, um, you know, the smell might not be interfering, won't be interfering with the dog. If not, if it's, and especially if it's bad enough, they'll, we'll have extra um, bale. So we'll just completely remove that bale. Um, and then anywhere on the ground, we'll spray with, you know, the dog, you know, with dog enzyme cleaner and wipe with paper towels and um, it if, it's a, on, if it's on the looser hay, we'll just they'll just pick up that bunch of looser hay and throw it away. So. Um, but the, I mean, I know the dog would be disqualified, but as a handler, I wouldn't be charged a fee or have to re, have to buy another bale of hay or anything like that. We did not discuss um, doing that for this for the national trial, but you may find that at other places that you do barn hunt because um, bales of straw are pretty expensive. I know some places have put in a fine for if your dog, um, you know, ruins a bale to the point where it has to be removed from the course, they might charge you a small fee. Oh, okay. I think I read that somewhere. That's why I asked that question. Yeah, and right. other, places, that other places do do that, so, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. I really learned a lot. You're awesome. welcome. Thank awesome. you for the great questions, Kathy. I'll be, I'll be coming in with bated breath. I know that. <laughs> It'll awesome. be fun as long as you and your dog are having fun. Then, oh, well, I hope so. I, I think it will. It sounds like fun. I, I hope she'll find some interest in a rat. <laughs> we'll I bet see. she will. We hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you. You're awesome. Welcome. So, so our um, next question: uh, At what point does the timer stop? So you have one minute in instinct and two minutes in novice. So, and when does the, when does your time end in each of those? Oh, uh, whenever you finish the last element. So, um, and you know, the judge calls it. Yeah. And in instinct, all you got to do is say rat. And that would be the end of your run. Um, in novice, you have to have done the rat, the tunnel and the climb. So whenever the last element is completed and the judge acknowledges it with their verbal, um, acknowledgement, that's when the time would end. Um, and if you run out of the time, the judge will say, I'm sorry, you're out of time, but they will let you then take, they'll tell you where the rat is and let you take your dog um, and show them the rat. The, um, the judge controls the timer. So he or she is the one holding the timer. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's, per, that's a perfect transition to our next question. Do you get a 30 second warning when time is almost up? You do not. And you cannot self time either. So. I wish. <laughs> And time is totally different when you're in the ring. It feels the same as <laughs> Two minutes can feel like an eternity. If you, I don't think I went all the way to that end of that video where I was um, struggling to get Freya to, um, to do the climb, um, but I didn't give up. You got to just keep working it because that was the last thing I had to do. So I was going to take every second I could, even if I ran out of time to try to get that last element in the hopes that I was going to get it in that two minutes. So yeah. Don't give up on your dog. Mm -hmm. You might think like two minutes is not a lot of time, but sometimes it's a lot of time. So, um, and I've had um, with Dodger, what was that run? 17 seconds. I had a novice run that was 17 seconds um, <laughs> where the judge said afterwards, well, that hardly seemed like it was worth it. But I was like, it was a cue. So he, I released him. He went through the tunnel, jumped on the bale of hay, went across like the bales on top of the tunnel and the rat was right there on top of the tunnel, like basically at the end of the top of the tunnel. <laughs> And he sniffed out hard. I called rat and that was it. Um, so you can get really quick runs or you can get um, runs that take, you know, one minute and 59 seconds. And that's still a call. I think I've been there. <laughs> uh, they do placements for the sake of ribbons. Um, and there is a high in class. So for each um, level, the dog that has the fastest time with a qualifying score for that level will get the high in class ribbon. Um, but in the end, you know, just like everything else, every other game you play, a qualifying score is a qualifying score towards your title. And your titles, you know, once you get your title, nobody's like, you know, was that a 17 second run or a one minute and 59 second run? So 
you know we didn't you talk about height divisions at all but that's something that's in you don't you don't have to worry about it at all it's spelled out in the um, rule book what the height divisions are and the placings are are within those height divisions too um I so think our next all, question all of us with tollers are gonna we're all gonna be at the same height division so i don't know my my giant one likes to be in that large division <laughs> large. <laughs> So what if your dog tries to scratch out the rat? Can you physically restrain it so it doesn't harm the rat? Um, so um, a lot of dogs indicate by scratching at the tube in some way. The tubes are designed, they're PVC. They're pretty hardy. Um, they're heavy duty. Yeah. So they're designed so that the dog is like doing a normal amount of scratching at the tube. It's not going to necessarily hurt the rat. And that's perfectly fine for them to scratch at the tube. That's a, that's a perfectly fine indication for them to do. What you don't want to have them do is like batting the tube around so much that they're going to knock it off the um, the bale of straw, um, knock it, you know, knock it around um, and and things like that. So if your dog is very aggressive with its with its pawing at it, as soon as you see it start to paw, you'll want to call rat and then step in and secure the um, step in and secure the the tube so that it doesn't go flying. Um, yeah, and that's great. And that's so our next question was, does the rat tip back and forth in the tube when you handle it? And and it can. Uh, yeah. they're, they're just little rats, but yeah. but it is kind of heavy when you pick it up. And yeah. I, two hands is are better than one to, when you're holding that rat tube. Yeah, yeah, they're not running around like end to end like this is a yeah. <laughs> they're heavy enough. And sometimes the rats, depending on how big they are, and actually like the bigger rats, the dogs can smell a little bit better. So it's nice when... <laughs> We see that the trial has bigger rats, but sometimes the rats can nest in like one end of the tube. So like your dog could in their holes on one end, but not the other end. So like your dog might, you know, not find the tube right away just because of where the rat is positioned in the tube. So that would be, you know, just probably not, nothing to worry about for novice, but just something to kind of know, like the rat could be in, could be small enough that it's nesting in one end, but the tubes are really heavy enough and sturdy enough that I don't think you have to worry that it's going to like tip over if you're sometimes the dog will kind of work you know an area like they think that they might find it but maybe like you said like the rats position in such a way that the way they're coming at they're not really you know sure about it or they can't really get their nose up to that one end that has all of the holes so then you might see them come around and go into the same area from a different direction to get to that tube to really sniff at it to determine if that's the rat tube or not. So that's all just part of them kind of working the scent and figuring out where it's coming from. Perfect. And then we had another question. Are the rats moved for each dog or by each group of dogs? So they're moved for each group of dogs. So when I talked earlier about the blind, they're in the same positions for all of the dogs in that blind. Um, and that can be up to five teams um, will have this, the same hides. And then um, once that blind is done, they pull all of the rats, they get the next group of people to go in the blinds and then they rehide them in a different spot. And that's the job of the, we call them course builders. And uh, they they help the judge set the course up for each level. And the rat wranglers sometimes help course build as well. Oh, here's a good question. You guys are asking great questions tonight. Do you do the briefing with or without your dog? Uh, so question. you'll want to do the briefing without your dog. I mean, if sometimes if you happen to have your dog out and pottying and your dog is perfectly friendly with other people and dogs, um, and the briefing is in a big open area, you might be able to stand off to the side with your dog. But generally, it's easiest just to come up for the briefing without your dog, um, especially if you're going to be approaching the um, course and looking, um, you know, for the judge to point out where the tunnel and the start box is or where the cradle is or, you know, where the different things are. Um, you'll want to make sure that you're approaching the ring without your dog. And if you are stuck and you need someone to hold your dog while you're going while you're getting the briefing, just find one of us and, and we can help you out and hold your dog for you. And I'll add in um, right. for the national, the way it's going to be set up is that there's going to be one really, 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 really big tent um, that's going to be used as the um, crating and grooming area for the entire um, week of the national. Um, and there is reserve grooming under there if someone wants to reserve a spot there, the spots are free, um, but they'll also just be spots for like day of crating. So um, 
you should plan on bringing some kind of a crate. Um, it can be a metal crate, a soft crate, a tent, whatever, something to put your dog in um, so that they have a place to be while you go up for the briefing. Um, and also so they have a place to be when it's to rest when it's not their turn and they're not um, they're not being walked or or pottied or or ready to go into the blind or or have their turn. That's a great point. Awesome. Can one give a command over and over, like get the rat or whatever to keep them looking? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> <laughs> we we do I do scent work and barn hunt so I, and I use different commands for each of them we use search for barn hunt and find it for scent work um some I know a girl that says find the find the rats find the rattos whatever you need to do to keep your dog motivated Yogi, and looking hunt, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's no, no yeah. limit to the number of verbal commands you hey can. look over here how about this whatever you want to say <laughs> that I'll use like tunnel I like to get my dog to tunnel like I practice yep. at home with just like a you know like agility tunnel and so I use tunnel I use find it um and I practice with and this is just my method so I'm kind of not an expert but like just to get my dog to like understand the find a command it, um and I don't do sound work so there's probably a better way that Carolyn can speak to but I'll put my dog in a separate room I'll take like three of her chuck it balls and I'll hide them like around a couch and, you know, like under a cushion, things like that. And then tell her to go find it and then reward her that way and hope that like that kind of helps her with the rats. I mean, it's never the same as actually having a live rat, which I don't, but um, like you can use any command you want and do training like really in any style you want. Awesome. Like I mentioned before, though, just be careful or conscious that you're not talking so much that you're that they're looking at you to figure out what you're saying versus concentrating on what they're supposed to be doing, which is just going out there and searching. Um, but if they're, if they're having trouble or if they're just like running amok or whatever, you can try to direct them. Or if they haven't checked someplace and they're having trouble finding the rat and you want them to go over to a different pile, you know, you might want to walk over there and call them and say, Hey, search over here or whatever you want to tell them. Definitely. So here's another good question. If the hide changes for each group of dogs in a blind, are there residue smells left behind, AKA for that later group, are there more, is there more scent around the course? That is a great question. Um, yeah, there is. So um, there's been situations where they've put the empty tube and they don't, they try not to do this in novice. They'll do this at higher levels though, where they'll put an empty tube where there used to be a tube that had a rat and there might've just been enough residual scent that the dog then hits on the empty tube and it's like, no, that wasn't a rat, but there was a rat there before. They're nice in novice, you know, they right. want everybody to succeed. So they're not going to purposely set people up to fail by doing something like that. Um, and they, they do try to keep them um, moved around and spread out enough um, that that's not necessarily going to be too much of an issue at the novice level. Um, but like I said, when you get to the higher levels, that is um, something that, um, can happen. Um, there's also all kinds of anybody who like studies, you know, how dogs use their nose and does scent work, um, you know, knows that there's all kinds of conditions that can make it easier or harder for the dog to find the rats or to, um, to scent, do scent work, um, including like the weather, the winds, the temperature, if it's cold, if it's hot. Um, sometimes if the tube is on the lower level, depending on the weather, the scent might be rising and they might be really, really sniffing at something that's um, like a, above that. But you're like, I don't know what you're doing because there's no tube here. Um, <laughs> think about maybe it's because the scent's traveling up and have them look down because the tube could be there or vice versa. Sometimes if the like rats in the tube above something and they're kind of like tunneling under it and you're like I don't see any rat here have them look up from where they are so I think that's important that's an important consideration give your dog time to think through what they may or may not be finding if you if your dog kind of indicates in one place but you're not sure and they decide to move on maybe bring them back uh, if, you, if you have time afterwards and they're not strongly indicating somewhere else bring them back to that spot and give them another chance to to thoroughly search it. Maybe they've got the zoomies when they first start and they're just kind of going all over the place. Give them a chance to, to think through what they're doing. 
Yeah, we saw Freya was like very excited to do the tunnel twice <laughs> in that one video. Um, and she kind of then got all of her happy out and then was able to sort of focus and work. So yep. yeah, the dogs, are, the dogs, like they're, they've been waiting in a blind, especially if they're like the last dog to go in the blind, they can be like kind of amped up once they get into the ring. And I think I've seen dogs just like run around in circles for the first minute because they're so excited. So that was yes. a really good point, Carolyn. Oh, yes. Kathy has an awesome question. It is not a silly question. Is there such a thing as a plastic training rat to practice with, like you would practice with a, a decoy training duck? Uh, and the short answer is no. Um, uh, a live rat is smells like a live rat. It smells different than those litter tubes, which we don't want to alert on. And rats smell different from right from mice, which smell different from uh, gerbils or hamsters or anything. Um, it's, it's, you really should be training if you have the capability with, with only live rats. Um, and some people will like, you can, I'm sure find like odors like you do for scent work online, but it is, it's not the same thing. They, it's the, it's the odor of the live rat that we want our dogs to, to learn to indicate on. I think you can teach them, like, um, Carrie said, playing around, like hiding something and teaching them to search for something. Um, but that's kind of different than actually teaching them like the indication of a rat. Right. That's teaching them the skill, not necessarily the odor. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, if you um, get into this more and really want to like, you know, explore barn hunt a lot, if you can find a local barn hunt club, they do like, we have one not too far from us where we can get lessons if we want, or you can just like rent a ring space. And so you can like do your own training with rats so they're they're like you know different options depending on like how how much you want to pursue barn hunt yeah on the barn hunt website um there's a there's a tab to look for clubs in your state um if you're looking for somewhere near you or just uh barn hunt enthusiast is a really popular facebook group as well that has people from all over the uh, north america that do barn hunt they're good resources too anybody who's willing to come to new jersey so Stonehenge that um, offer that's doing our trial at the Nationals is in North Jersey and Andover. Um, and then we have tail wagging in Robbinsville. Um, and then there's also one that occasionally does it in um, Millstone, New Jersey. Um, and uh, a group of us, myself, Carrie, um, Tiffany, and Deb usually get together and, and um, do some bar hunting. We're happy to have anybody who wants to coordinate and do trials with us so we can help you as much as we can. <laughs> it's also more fun with friends. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have not been able to talk my husband into letting me get rats yet to practice with. Because <laughs> we I don't have, have anything else. on that one either. So. <laughs> Yeah, the frozen ducks are <laughs> <laughs> that was already a, <laughs> a big yeah one. that's pushing it <laughs> <laughs> all right last call for questions you guys have asked some awesome questions tonight oh, one, one more. more how do you know when it's your dog's turn is there a list posted of the running order Great yes question. there'll actually be a computer screen um which will have like the running order so it'll say if um if there's 10 dogs and novice, it'll say these five are going to be in blind one, these five are going to be in blind two. Um, and you'll know, you know, it, within your blind, who's one, two, three, four, five. Um, and the um, blind steward is there to kind of um, help guide you. So if you like get into the blind and you forget the order, you're not sure who goes next or whatever, they can help kind of um, say, okay, it's going to be this dog's turn um, next and things like that. Um, and that um, the beauty of it being on a computer screen for Stonehenge is that we can easily move people around. So if somebody's about to go in the rally ring and there's somebody else who's running a novice that was in blind two, we might be able to switch them into blind one and move that person who is about to go into the rally ring, you know, to a, to a later blind. Um, so we'll be able to kind of easily switch things around. Um, other pl other places we've been to will do something similar, but they might use a whiteboard or magnets or something like that to um indicate who, you know what the order is going to be and who's going to be in what blinds and things like that yeah and I think Stonehenge even tracks the time so they'll know they'll like if they're doing it the same way that as they do their um trials at their facility that you can they have like a link to a google doc and it'll show the times that each person's going and like when so you can get an idea roughly of, of when you are but like Jen and Carolyn said if there are any conflicts just 
um, let us or the blind steward know so we can um, help you out and put you in a different blind. Sounds like we're going to get spoiled by all this advanced technology. Yes. This yeah. well, they actually even have, um, they even, I think if they're going to be doing it the same, they even have um, a way that you can go on your phone and like check yourself in um, to say that I'm here and then, yeah, and then see the running order and, and where we are and things on your phone as scores That's come cool. in. They put them on there as well. So awesome. All right. We got another question. If your dog uh, comes into heat, is there a change in the order? Yes. yes. So bitches in season are allowed to run in barn hunt. It's one of the very few events that you actually can still run a bitch in season in. So um, those of us have girls and you never know when they might come into season. That actually is a good thing. So you don't feel like you have to then withdraw and lose money or anything like that. The difference is that the bitch in season will run um, at the end of the class um, and they will be in their own blind unless there happens to be more than one bitch in season in the same class, and then they would make a blind of bitches in season <laughs> for that class. Um, so um, they would put you at the end of the class in your own blind. That's the and, um, let, if you ha have a bitch in season, let the trial secretary know that Sylvan um, Anagini, and let him know right away because you'll have to use like a separate potty area and then they'll make sure to plan out the blind. So once you know, once you know that she's in season and it'll be in season at the trial, just make sure that you- We may her. also ask you to create someplace um, differently because um, that shared tent that um, is the creating and grooming area is also gonna be shared with those competitors that are gonna be doing rally and obedience. And I know that they would probably appreciate it if we kept the bitches in season away from the dogs that will be doing rally and obedience. So we may have to um, have you create um, your dog someplace separately. So, but if that does happen, just let us know and we'll work out the details with you. So, but you can still do barn hunt. <laughs> Perfect. So where do you wait with your dog before going into the blind? Um, you can, if uh, you can have your dog in that crating area, you're welcome to have a chair for yourself if you want to hang out in that crating area. If you want to watch, I just ask that you keep your dog someplace away from the barn hunt ring, like in the crate in the crating area, then you can come up yourself and watch. Um, just keep in mind the rules that we went over with about staying back and staying quiet. Um, don't approach the ring or the blind um, with your dog when it's not your turn. Um, and just be conscious of um, you know, not doing anything that could get the person in the ring. Um, just, you know, um, a, a non-qualifying score because it was considered double handling because you did something to indicate um, where the rat was or is. Yeah. Good question. So uh, Kathy asked, how many, how many entries do we have and were we surprised by the turnout? Uh, we absolutely were, I'll be honest. I really, I thought I was going to be- In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I was very surprised. Um, I think we ended up with, a it ends up being a total of 109 runs. Um, and I think it was 106, well, 105, I would say it's 105 totalers. Um, me with my CME ed, and then we give um, the judges complimentary runs with their own dogs um, as part of um, thanking them for judging us. So um, it turns out to be, I think it was 109 runs if I'm, if I have, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, that sounds right. We were thrilled though with the turnout because we weren't sure there was a lot of discussion before, you know, like, should we bring barn hunt to the nationals? Is there going to be enough interest? And everyone said yes. So, um, we yeah, so we're super excited and we're hoping that, um, maybe future nationals will use this as a way to see that, um, barn hunt is very desired amongst taller people and, um, hopefully they'll offer barn hunt more often. Yes, absolutely. So the trial, Jean, the trial is on show grounds. Um, what time do we need to check in that morning? Um, so we, the trial originally had a start time of 9 a.m. And I think if they haven't already, Stonehenge is gonna um, notify everybody that they actually wanna change the start time to 8 a.m. Um, because we had so many entries um, and they were trying to maximize the number of people and runs that they could do. We're gonna push the start time up to 8 a.m. Um, so, the in theory the first dog for instinct should be going in the ring at 8 a.m which means that the briefing will probably be earlier than that i'm going to suggest everybody um you know who's particularly who's doing instinct and novice 
um, to be at the area of, the, you know, the Barnhut Ring and the secretary um, area by 730. And if you're doing instinct um, and you haven't done your normal morning potty walk or whatever, you'll want to get that done um, and and be ready for you to be able to pay attention um, by 730. Right. Can you describe kind of where our tent is going to be in relation to the hotel and then the big tent? Yes. So um, when you come out of the side of the hotel that's going to be closest to the field where all of our events are going to be, um, there's a parking lot. And then as you walk across the parking lot, Barn Hunt is actually going to be the first thing that you'll come to. So there'll be um, a, a larger tent that's smaller than the large, the large, large tent. <laughs> It'll be, um, I think, 20 by 40. That'll be the actual barn hunt ring. Um, the blind will be in um, more of like a 10 by 10 easy up. Um, and there'll, there'll be sides, three sides to the easy up, or maybe even like a half a side to the one side so that nobody's talking to you while you're in the blind. Um, and then uh, there'll be another easy up on the other side of the ring where it'll be like the trial secretary um, where you'll see like the computer screen of, you know, um, that'll show you the, the running order and things like that. And then if you were to walk past that further into the field, that's where you're gonna get the, the biggest, the big tent um, that's gonna be our shared grooming and creating area. And then on the other side of that big tent will be the rings for obedience and rally. Um, Perfect. So we're we're really close to the hotel, right? Really close. Yeah. Yeah. Just across, that, just across a uh, two car, you know, two length parking lot. So. Perfect. Really Perfect. Close. And then, um, do we need to reserve a spot to have um, our your holding crate? If you want to have the same spot all week long, um, particularly going into the confirmation show for Friday and Saturday, you'll want to reserve a grooming spot. Um, but if you're just doing, you know, some of the other sports, just agility and barn hunt or in rally and obedience, um, you can do day of crating um, as long as you clean up your, there'll be designated spots for day of crating, um, but you might just, you're going to have to move your stuff. Um, so if you want a, one designated spot for the whole time, you can just do reserve grooming and reserve grooming is free. It's just so that we can know how many spots to hold and kind of plot out spots and stuff like that. So awesome. there shouldn't be any lack of spots. I think Bill figured out that we could have 200 um, 10 feet by 10 feet spots under that big ring. So that gives you an idea of how big that. Wow. So. Awesome. All right, last call for questions. We've had some great questions and some great discussion tonight. Thank you guys for just picking them up. Carrie and myself will be there to help anybody who's doing it at the national. Um, there's also going to be um, a few other experienced people. Um, so Carolyn will be there. Tiff will be there. Um, I know there was a couple other people who said um, I have experience and I'm willing to help newbies. So don't, if you're, you know, nervous about anything, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to, you know, ask somebody and we'll, we'll get you the answers and, and get you the information that you need. So. See one more question popping up. Oh, thank you, Donna. Thank you for thank being here you. tonight. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And uh, we're excited. If you're to not see doing you it at the national. national. We hope that you'll be encouraged to try it someplace yeah. near you soon. And if you're ever interested in doing, doing barn hunt in New Jersey, uh, let us know. We'd love to have you join our little group. <laughs> we encourage each other a lot. Yeah. Um, we'll just make you buy a t-shirt on Amazon so that you can match us. <laughs> <laughs> if any other questions come up between now and then, you can send find any of us on Facebook or like post a note on the Facebook page or um, send us an email any you know feel free to get in touch with us any way you want to all right thanks everybody bye. have a good night bye bye everyone bye thank you bye bye